In today's video, I'll be surviving 100 days of modded skyblock in hardcore Minecraft. But this is not your ordinary modded skyblock. The mod pack I'll be using starts you out as essentially a caveman with such a tiny brain that you can't see any ores or even understand how to make something as simple as a normal crafting table. And in order to progress, I will be tasked with completing a wide variety of advancements that will have me fighting deadly monsters and even traveling to other dimensions. My goal for this 100 days is to reach age 2, which will allow me to craft some powerful weapons, tools, and armor. But there are many terrifying creatures and dangerous journeys that stand in my way to accomplishing this goal. Before we begin though, I have to mention that this video took a ton of time to record and edit. So if you end up enjoying and want to see me do 200 days, please consider leaving the video a like and subscribing to my channel. It would mean the world to me. Also, literally everything you see in this video was streamed live over on my Twitch channel, so I'll be leaving a link in the description if you'd like to check that out. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started with my journey. So on day one, I spawned in and just immediately got to work. I started out by crafting myself a flint hatchet in order to be able to chop down some trees because on this mod pack, your fists are not going to work. I then used these logs I collected to make myself a workbench, which is basically just the caveman version of a crafting table, meaning it's a crafting table, but a lot worse. I also made myself a chopping block and used this chopping block to turn the logs into planks and made myself the caveman version of a chest, which as you can guess is just a chest, but not quite as good. I then collected some gravel, which I converted into flint and used this flint to craft a flint pickaxe so I could clear out some space for a bunker, which is where I would be calling home. And after clearing out this bunker for myself, I had also gotten a lot of stone. So I used this stone to upgrade to stone tools. And as I continued to collect some more resources underground, a golem wandered into my bunker and nearly killed me. Thankfully, I managed to take him out before I died and continued collecting resources. I then crafted a clay kiln, which once again, as you can probably guess, is basically just a scuffed version of a furnace and lit a fire under it. I then used this kiln to convert a log into a charcoal block, which would allow me to have a permanent fire going under it so that I didn't have to keep relighting it every single day. On day two, I began by setting up a grill so that I could cook up some food and recover from the injuries inflicted upon me by the golem. I also crafted a grindstone and a work blade, two items that aren't particularly useful right now, but will become very, very useful later on. I also went ahead and made both a spear and a tomahawk so that I had the option of ranged combat in case I encountered any powerful enemies. And finally, I collected some lily pads to craft myself a volar kite, which would allow me to travel to new islands to collect more resources that I needed to progress on my adventure. And on the next day, I immediately put this brand new item to use and began my search for squids. Now, you might be asking why was I searching for squids? And the reason is that ink sacs are a key component to getting leather. And leather is not only an essential part to me progressing to the next age, but it also happens to be like the only form of armor I can get at this stage in the game. And with this being a hardcore playthrough, having some form of armor is pretty important. So I really wanted leather. Unfortunately, as night began to fall, I had still not found any squids, so I decided to head back to my island and look into crafting a nature's compass, which could maybe help to point me in the direction of a biome that would have squids in it. As I was collecting materials for this compass, mobs began to spawn, and one of these mobs was the karate zombie, which I very quickly learned was a mob that I did not want to mess with. Bone did more. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Karate zombies? Very dangerous. Thankfully though, I was able to make it out alive, and I retreated to my bunker and crafted the nature's compass. It wasn't long though before I had my next near-death experience, because on the following day, as I continued my quest for squids, I began to rapidly descend towards the void while using my volar kite due to the fact that I pretty much had no idea how to control the thing. Thankfully, I was just able to barely clutch it at the bottom of a waterfall and swim my way up to a nearby island. Things didn't get much better though, because as soon as I made it up to the island, I was immediately attacked by a hammerhead shark. And to make matters even worse, once I finally caught my breath, I realized I had no idea where I was and was now completely lost. Fortunately though, after cluelessly flying around for like 10 minutes straight, I managed to find my way back home. 
and after that trip, I obviously wasn't too eager to continue island hopping looking for squid, so I started to look into other ways that I could potentially get some ink sacs. Which led me to find an item called the strainer, which in theory I could just place down in the water on my island and over time it would passively collect some ink sacs for me. So on day 5, I got to work on gathering all of the different items I would need for the strainer and managed to get it set up before night had even started to fall. By the end of the day though, the strainer had still not collected a single ink sack, and I started to worry that my only option was going to be to go back out adventuring with the kite. But as it turns out, the reason my strainer wasn't generating any ink sacks was because I'm an idiot and was using the wrong type of strainer. So I quickly switched it out for the correct one and even crafted an additional one to try and speed up the process. And on the morning of day seven, I climbed out of my bunker and made my way over to the water to see what my strainers had gotten for me. As I approached the water though, I was ambushed by quite a few mobs. But surprisingly, this actually turned out to be a good thing because the zombie I killed dropped a wolf hood, which was a helmet that provided even more armor bars than the leather helmet I was currently going for, so that was a very pleasant surprise. And things only got even better, as to my surprise, when I checked the stash of my first strainer, it had already generated four ink sacks for me, which was more than enough for me to get started on creating some leather. So I got to work on grinding up the rest of the materials I would need, and then use them all to create the fluid bladder, which could be used to create the hides that would eventually become leather. The process of actually creating said leather though is surprisingly time consuming but after spending the next day and a half mining a ton of salt grinding down a ton of tree bark slaughtering a ton of horses for their pelts salting these pelts hydrating them and drying them and then hydrating them and drying them once again i had finally made a few pieces of leather and on the evening of day 9, I took some of this leather and used it to craft a teepee, which would allow me to finally start sleeping through the nights and not be constantly harassed by all these terrifying monsters. Of course, as you're all aware though, I was not yet done with the leather making process because I still needed to complete my armor set. And this time around, I wasn't going to just need 5 leather, I was going to need a whopping 19 leather. So on days 10 through 12, I once again repeated this painstakingly tedious process of hydrating and drying hides. Until on day 13, I had finally reached the end of the process once again. And as I was waiting for the hides to dry, I did a bit of exploring to nearby islands and found a villager who I was able to trade my extra ink sacks for an antique atlas, which would be a useful tool to help me not get lost again in the future. And when I returned to my island, all of my leather had dried, allowing me to finally craft my remaining three pieces of armor and complete the set. So with my quest for a full armor set now completed, it was time to get to work on my next mission, which would be horsepower, a key component in progressing to the first age. And you guessed it, horsepower requires even more leather. So I grudgingly spent the next two days repeating that process all over again. And on day 16, I set up both the horse grindstone and the horse chopping block, allowing me to have a little bit of automation so I didn't have to manually grind for everything. I had actually even gone a little bit overboard with the leather this time around, so I used the excess to make a piggy backpack which could be used for transporting animals back to my island. So naturally I flew to a nearby island that had some cows and kidnapped them because I would be needing them for a ritual in just a few days. After that though, the next few days were surprisingly uneventful. Aside from a creeper blowing up and griefing the horse chopping block I had just set up, I mostly spent the next few days working on general island improvements, such as setting up a small area of farmland on my island and planting down some seeds, upgrading my work stump to the Mark II version, which would allow me to craft in bulk, getting the entire island lit up by placing down some torches so I didn't have to deal with mob spawns during the daytime anymore, and finally, building a small dirt wall around the outer edges of my island so that I didn't just randomly walk off into the void one day and end the 100 days. On the morning of day 23 though, I decided it was time for a bit of an adventure. Because you see, even though I now had access to horsepower, my current setup was almost entirely useless because of the fact that the chest I currently had couldn't be hooked up to hoppers. So any items the horses produced would just drop on the ground and despawn, which obviously isn't very helpful to me. So I took a trip to the Darklands Forest, which has a special type of wood that can be used to craft primal chests, which are exactly like normal chests, they just have a lot less storage space. 
Now, this forest is super, super dangerous at nighttime due to the types of mobs that spawn there. Thankfully for me, I was able to get all of the wood I needed and get the heck out of there and make it back to my island before night fell. And over the next two and a half days, I worked on getting the automation set up for these horsepower systems, which required crafting some hoppers and primal chests, as well as resetting up that horse chopping block that had been exploded by the creeper just a few days prior. And with that mission completed, it was now time to get into some rituals. What exactly are these rituals you might be saying? Well, I'm glad you asked. Basically, they involve crafting a totem and some instruments, doing a little bit of singing and dancing, and bada boom, bada bing, your saplings turn into red cedar trees, and those cows I previously kidnapped, turn into buffalo. <laughs> Which might just seem like two random things, and while they kind of are, they both drop items that would be crucial to my progression. With those rituals out of the way though, it was now time for my biggest challenge yet. Because remember that Darklands Forest I had previously discussed? Well, it was time to return. But this time, I wasn't just going there during the day. This time, I would have to purposely wait out until the nighttime. Because those terrifying mobs that I also previously discussed, well, they also just happened to be the only mobs that drop the next item I needed. So I grabbed my Volarkite, flew over to the Darklands Forest, and camped out until night began to fall. As it turned to night though, the mob spawn started off very, very slow, with there only being a small shadow creature that only dropped four fragments when I killed it, not nearly enough for a full shadow gem. And after waiting for a little while longer and not getting any more mob spawns, I decided it must have something to do with my presence on the island, so I departed for another Darklands biome that was nearby. And this island had a lot of the mobs, but it actually was too many of them, and I was almost positive I would die if I even attempted to take on those guys. So I ended up traveling to a third one that had a large body of water right in the center of the island, which I figured would be really useful for keeping any of the mobs at bay. This time I was able to take out a slightly bigger shadow creature, but once again it only dropped one shard, which were better than the fragments, but I would still need nine of them to craft the full gem that I needed so I was gonna have to take out the big creature, the Shadow Beast. I made my way back over to the original island that I had been on because I noticed mobs were once again starting to spawn there. But once I landed, I quickly realized that there were way too many on that island as well. So I dipped back over to the one with the big body of water. And as I landed, I spotted him, the Shadow Beast, the one I needed to take out to get the gem. This guy was pretty dangerous though, because not only did his attacks hit fairly hard, but every time he hits you, he also blinds and slows you. So I played my cards very carefully. I built a small cobblestone wall between me and the Shadow Beast and slowly took out the other mobs on the island one by one. And once it was just me and the Shadow Beast remaining, I made my attack. As he blinded me, I wildly swung my axe, doing a decent amount of damage to him with each hit. And after just a few hits, I managed to take him out. And to make things even better, he didn't only drop one Shadow Gem for me, but he even dropped two. So with my mission now accomplished, I dipped out of there as fast as possible and started making my way back to my home island. I had somehow managed to get myself lost again though, so it took me the entirety of day 30 just to find my way back home. I then spent the next four days working on crafting the final pieces I would need to progress to age one. This included making a mill, crafting a flame grilled whopper. Yes, that is a real item. <laughs> and cooking up some porcelain that I finally used to craft the heater and the melter. And just like that, on day 35, I had progressed into age one, which not only meant that I could finally make a normal crafting table, but I could also now see a few ores. So naturally, I couldn't contain my excitement, and I spent the entirety of day 36 mining malachite, which was the first ore I found. And now that I had way too much malachite, my next goal was to melt it down into copper, which sounds like it would be pretty straightforward, but for whatever reason, it was a very confusing process that had me spending the next five days messing around with different things until finally on day 41, I put some pieces together in my tiny brain and made some copper ingots. My next mission was now to find tin, which I could melt down together with those copper ingots I had just made to create bronze, which would not only allow me to get bronze armor, but would also allow me to get a variety 
variety of very helpful items. And it didn't take long to find it at all, as on day 43, I found some, mined it up, and the very next day, combined it with my copper to make bronze. I then spent the entirety of the next day making even more bronze, and on day 46, I used all this bronze to make myself a full set of armor and tools. I also went ahead and crafted the blood altar, and over the course of the next two days, started to dabble in a little bit of blood magic. But since I'm on a hardcore world, and this requires me to sacrifice some of my health, I decided to hold off on doing too much with it until I understood it a little bit better. With my progression to age one, I had also unlocked a variety of new food sources. And in this mod pack, having a fully balanced nutrition can actually provide you with up to 10 extra absorption hearts. So I decided to spend the next few days creating new farms and just working on that balanced nutrition in general, because those extra absorption hearts would not only come in handy for the blood magic, but would also be particularly useful for a quite scary upcoming journey I had. And after getting myself up to seven and a half absorption hearts, it was time to get started on that dangerous quest. You see, my next major point of progression was going to be crafting a teleporter to the beneath, which not only is the beneath itself absolutely terrifying, but almost all of the things I have to do in order to craft the teleporter are also quite terrifying. First, I had to travel back to the Darklands Forest, this time to take out a Depth School and get some Coralium Plagued Flesh. Next, I had to make a visit to a Shogoth Lair, and let me just say, I think these guys might be the most terrifying looking creatures I have ever seen in Minecraft. But anyways, I had to steal a statue from them and kill a bunch of them for their flesh, and also mine some of the stone that their base is made out of. And finally, I had to make another trip back to the Darklands because as it turned out, I needed a shadow gem and I had already used the two I had previously gotten. Then I had to set up the pedestal that I would use to start charging my Necronomicon, which is the book that I would eventually have to use to perform the ritual to craft the teleporter to the beneath. Kind of complicated, I know. Anyways though, this ended up turning into a whole five day ordeal in which I almost died on two separate occasions, but I somehow made it out alive with the charged book. Oh jeez. Oh no. Oh no, I got the plague. I got the plague. Oh no. Okay, this could be bad. Oh no. I just need to get somewhere. I need an updraft. Okay. Okay, it's good. It's over. It's over. Whew, whew, whew. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Get me out of here. And with that completed, the only thing left to do was to perform the ritual. But before I could do that, there were quite a few things I needed to get done. First, I spent the next three days just acquiring a bunch of random blocks that for some reason are required for this ritual. I then spent the following four days doing a ton of blood magic in order to get the apprentice blood orb. And while sacrificing my health over and over again was certainly scary, I thankfully did not die from it. And then on day 69, with all of those steps finally completed, I was able to actually perform the ritual. Okay. Spooky things happening. Scary noises. Stand back so I don't get struck by lightning. And there is the beneath teleporter. It is nighttime though, so let's get out of here before mobs start spawning. And there we go. Ritual has been completed. <laughs> now, even though I technically had the teleporter and could travel to the beneath whenever I wanted to, I was not quite yet ready to go. And I spent the next two days simply preparing a bunch of items for the trip because like I mentioned earlier, the beneath is a very scary place. And out of any point throughout these first 70 or so days, this was the time I was most likely to die. So I wanted to make sure I was over prepared for it. And after collecting every single item that I thought might even have just a little bit of use for the adventure, on day 72, I entered the beneath. Alright, here we are. The first thing is to fix this, get this lit up, and kind of eye out where I am. Okay, so I'm below a platform. I actually don't know if that's better or not. 
That's gonna be my target. Let's get the atlas in my inventory so we can see. Okay. Oh, no water. Okay, so we're gonna have to go... I'm gonna aim for that one over there because we do need water to land in. Now we start with the oak leaves. Which this will basically be my um, landing platform. Okay, so now I have strength two and speed two for a little bit. And I'm gonna check this place out. How far is it? All right. Oh, it does have water. Okay. Okay, not sure why he got aggroed. Okay. This is a good test of this right now, though. Okay, I clutched the bullet kite anyway. Whew! Okay, we got started. We're not done yet. We got started. Same thing, same plan, same plan. You can see a little bit less than last time. I can hear I can hear the shadow people. Yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna get jump scared. We're gonna get jump scared. Let's get rid of this guy. We're gonna get jump scared any second now. Go, go, go. It's time to leave. It's time to leave. It's time to leave. <sighs> oh, that was not ideal. Okay, things are spawning up here now, which is not good. And when I returned to the island for the third time, there were very few mobs left, and I was able to clear it out with ease. The challenging part was hopefully over. All I had to do now was mine beneath the island and get both the aquamarine and the black quartz ore that I had come for. Fortunately, once I got below the surface, I was greeted by plenty of both these ores, so I knew I wasn't gonna have to clear out another island and everything I needed would be right here. And after mining a ton of both the ores for like 10 minutes straight so that I would hopefully never have to return to the beneath again, I went back up to the surface and made my escape back to the overworld. And honestly, after that heart pounding experience, all I wanted to do was just take a chill pill for a couple days, but I needed to continue to make progress. So over the next six days, I started working on some more forms of automation. But this time, instead of horsepower, I was working on water power. I used my newly acquired black quartz to craft an axle, which I eventually crafted into a water wheel. And I used that water wheel to power a saw, which could be used to chop and shear logs much faster than I could by hand. And during the following three days, I made quite possibly my biggest advancement yet, because after crafting the turntable, I was finally at long last able to make the bucket. Yes, that's right. A bucket might actually be my biggest advancement up until this point. And that might seem weird to you if you've never played this mod pack, but up until this point, I had no good way of transferring water around or even any way to pick up lava at all. So having a bucket just opens the door to so much efficiency improvement. And on the morning of day 82, I began my quest for a tree. Yes, you heard that right, a singular tree. But this wasn't any ordinary tree. This was a very special tree that I needed to get if I wanted to progress into age two. But after spending a whole day searching for the tree, I still had not found it. Obviously though, just giving up on this was not an option. This tree was required for progression. So on the next day, I once again went out in search of this tree. Luckily for me, this time I was able to find it and I even got a sapling to drop in the process so I could just grow any more of these trees I needed right on my island. 
And now with all the materials I needed in my possession, I spent the next couple of days preparing everything for the ritual. And on day 86, I performed the ritual and created the luminous crafting table. And just like that, we were officially in age two. So now that we were in age two, I had two main goals I wanted to get done find iron and find gold. Iron because obviously it'd be very useful to have a set of iron tools and maybe even armor and gold because it's needed to make the casks that I'll have to use if I really want to start getting into the smeltery mod. Thankfully after spending a few days searching around my nearby islands I was able to find these two ores without much struggle. And after returning home on day 92 I figured it was also time to upgrade my smeltery since I was probably going to be using it a lot more now. I then created my custom tool and armor station and started to create a bunch of casts using the gold I had mind that I would ultimately need if I wanted to make these custom tools and armor. And after spending a full day just searching through the vast amount of customization options, most of which were admittedly locked to me still at this point in the game, I finally settled on crafting an iron rapier on day 96, which was my new custom sword that was hopefully going to be a lot better than the bronze sword I had previously been using. On days 97 through 99, I made a return to the totemic rituals mod, this time to try and summon a market that could be used to buy a wide variety of seeds and other plants. Performing this ritual was shockingly hard though. I literally had to make every single instrument and it took me like five tries just to barely get it at the last second on the fifth try. And finally, on day 100, I used some bronze and iron to make my custom armor set, officially preparing me for whatever crazy challenges await me in my next 100 days.